Hey, it's Anne Marie with Speak Confident English. In this week's Confident English lesson, we're going to explore how to correctly use because of and due to in English. These two phrases are often used interchangeably in spoken communication by English speakers everywhere. But should they be? The short answer is no, this is a common mistake. And by the end of this lesson today, you'll know precisely why it's a common mistake and how to avoid it. You'll know exactly how to use because of and due to every time you communicate in English. And at the end, I've got a quiz to test your know-how. But first, if you don't already know, I'm Anne Marie, an English confidence and fluency coach. Everything I do is designed to help you get the confidence you want for your life and work in English. One way I do that is by sharing these weekly Confident English lessons. So while you're here, make sure you subscribe to my Speak Confident English channel on YouTube so you never miss one of these Confident English lessons. I mentioned at the start that because of and due to are often used interchangeably. And I want to share an example of that. Let's take a look at these two sentences. We canceled the trip because of the heavy rain. And we canceled the trip due to the heavy rain. Are both of these correct? Not quite. The correct one in this pair is we canceled the trip because of the heavy rain. You will hear English speakers use both of these sentences, but it's a mistake to do so. The challenges both because of and due to show a cause and effect relationship in a sentence, thus leading to a lot of confusion and this common mistake. However, as you're going to learn, there is a distinct difference in the meaning and use of both of these phrases. So let's take a look at each one in depth. We'll start with because of. We use because of when we want to explain the reason of something, or we want to answer the question why. Why did something happen? If we go back to that example sentence of, we canceled the trip because of the heavy rain, we can ask the question, why was the trip canceled? Because of the heavy rain. Let's take a look at a few more examples to see this in action. She missed the meeting because of traffic. He couldn't sleep because of the loud music next door. The presentation was successful because of the team's extensive preparation. Again, in each of these examples, we can ask the question why. Why did she miss the meeting? Because of traffic. Why couldn't he sleep? Because of the loud music next door. Why was the presentation successful? Because of the team's extensive preparation. In each of those sentences, because of is followed by a noun or a noun phrase. It can also be followed by a pronoun. And by using that phrase, because of, we connect the cause with the effect or outcome of something. For example, in that first sentence, the cause is traffic and it led to the outcome of missing a meeting. Now, if you love understanding the finer details of English grammar, let's do a little more exploration. In a sentence, because of is an adverbial prepositional phrase. And like any adverb, it can be used to modify a verb or an adjective. Now that word modify is definitely an example of jargon. It can be a tricky word to understand. In language, when we talk about an adverb, for example, modifying a verb. It means that it limits or it adds to the meaning of a word. So an adverb or an adverbial prepositional phrase adds to the meaning of the verb. Now, if we go back to those three example sentences, I want to look carefully at the structure of the sentence. In those three examples, I've highlighted the verb or verb phrase, in each case, that is followed by the use of because of, and because of is followed by a noun, noun phrase, or pronoun. 
Now, before we move on and take a look at the use of due to, I want to share one tip with you when we're using the words because of. In all the example sentences I've shared with you, we've used because of in the middle of the sentence. We can also move it to the beginning. For example, because of traffic, she missed the meeting. Because of the loud music next door, he couldn't sleep. Because of the team's extensive preparation, the presentation was successful. And now let's move on to do to, and then I've got a quiz to test your knowledge. Do to is typically used in more formal or written English, and it explains the reason for a situation or condition. In other words, it means as a result of or caused by. Grammatically, the use of due to modifies a noun or noun phrase as opposed to a verb or verb phrase. And when we use due to in a sentence, it is followed by a noun or noun phrase. Let's take a look at an example to see all of that. The cancellation of the trip was due to heavy rain. Here, due to explains what caused the cancellation. And cancellation is a noun. Here, due to is explaining what caused the cancellation. In fact, we could even replace the words due to with caused by. The cancellation of the trip was caused by heavy rain. Let's take a look at a few more examples with due to. The delay in the project was due to technical difficulties. The company's closure was due to poor management. The success of the presentation was due to extensive preparation. When we review those sentences, once again, we could replace due to with caused by in each one. In fact, that's a helpful, simple way to check whether the use of due to is correct. If you can replace the words by caused by, then you've made the right choice. The delay in the project was caused by technical difficulties. The company's closure was caused by poor management. In the third example, we could also replace this with as a result of. The success of the presentation was a result of extensive preparation. With that, let's continue to explore the grammatical structure of using do to and how it's different from because of. We learned that because of is an adverbial prepositional phrase and it's used to modify verbs. Due to is an adjectival prepositional phrase and just like any adjective, it's used to modify nouns or noun phrases. If we go back to the example sentences we were just reviewing, you'll see that I've highlighted the noun and the use of due to gives us an answer to the question, what was the cause? What was the cause of the delay? Technical difficulties. What was the cause of the closure? Poor management. At the start of this lesson, I use an example sentence, we canceled the trip because of the heavy rain. And I shared a second sentence using the words due to instead of because of. And of course, we identified that that was incorrect. Let's look at how we would make a change so that we could use due to in a similar sentence. In this first example, we canceled the trip because of heavy rain. I have the verb canceled. I have because of followed by a noun or noun phrase, and it answers the question why. Why was the trip canceled? If I want to use due to, I need to have a noun to modify. So instead of the verb canceled, I would use the noun cancellation. The cancellation of the trip was due to heavy rain. Now the focus is what caused the cancellation. Now that you have a complete picture on how to correctly use because of and due to, let's do a quiz. I have several example sentences for you and I want you to decide whether you should use because of or due to in the sentence. After you make that decision, you can check your answers. In the comment section below, I'll share the correct choice. Sentence number one, 
The smoke in the home was the burning cake in the oven. What would be the right choice there? Sentence two, Kelly loves skiing, the experiences she had as a kid with her parents. Sentence three, every worker is striking, the low wages they're offered. Number four, our concerns were the lack of details provided in the contract. Number five, I parked my car down the street, the road construction. And number six, the restaurant's success is the head chef's creative menu and her business partner's marketing skills. Again, I want you to decide whether you should use because of or due to in those sentences, and you can check your answers below. If you found today's lesson helpful to you, I would love to know, and you can tell me in one very simple way. Give this lesson a thumbs up here on YouTube. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss one of these Confident English lessons. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time.